You don't necessarily need to see it for it to work. And, and generally speaking, when you don't see it, that's when it's in brine form and that's when it's actually working. And so that paradigm shift is something that we're gonna have to think about. Hi, I'm Phil Sexton with WIT Advisors. Okay, so the third thing for us to think about is quality or quality of service and what does that really mean and where does salt use and changing the way we do that fit into that. So if you think about it now, salt use has really been used more as a very much a reactionary uh, method uh, to break the bond of ice. Uh, now we're thinking about it more from a proactive standpoint, so more of a bottom-up approach versus a top-down approach, more of a pre-storm versus post-storm. And thinking about that in terms of, so why, why would the customer care about this? Why would the property owner really care about this? And really what it boils down to is their, their level of service expectations. So you may have, for example, a client that you've been working with for, for many years now, but if you think about it, generally speaking, clients always expect a little bit more every time we do something. They expect a little bit more related to, to their level of service expectations. So we've gone from you know, an industry that white parking lots or, or some semi-hard pack roads were ex acceptable at one time years ago to now you hear things like zero tolerance, black and wet, and it's gotten to the point now where clients' perception of quality service is seeing the salt on the surface. That's one of those mindsets that we're gonna to need to change because you don't necessarily need to see it for it to work. And, and generally speaking, when you don't see it, that's when it's in brine form and that's when it's actually working. And so that paradigm shift is something that we're gonna to have to think about next when we, when we talk about the level of service related to what our customers expect to see and what our, our customers expect as far as a level of performance. So when, when you drill down on just what it's providing you as an applicator, let's say, for, for level of service and, and how the service is performed. In the traditional business as usual model using solid salt, um, the salt comes whipping out of the back of the, the spreader. Most times nobody's measuring the actual amount, so we not only do we not know what the application rate is, many times those application rates are very inconsistent because depending on if it's a different pile of salt or depending on the moisture content, there could be twice as much or twice as little coming out of the back. Then you have the issues with uh, clumping, the issues with it clogging the spreader, and so that's, that's actually more downtime and frustration at the operations level. When you think about it, once, it, once the application has reached the surface of the parking lot or the sidewalk, there's that bounce and scatter effect. So right away, and a lot of studies have, have, have proven this, there's, there's at least 20% waste just because of the way it's being applied in the solid form. And then to think about when we talk about the, the client's level of service expectations, and you talk about, again, things like zero tolerance, black and wet, you know, in gen generally speaking, people expect to see a certain result from our efforts as snow and ice management professionals by, say, 7 in the morning. At 7 in the morning, they want to see that salt doing something. So if at 6.30 in the morning is the first chance you've had to put down that, that next application of salt, think about it this way. The salt that we need to react has to react to moisture first to convert to a brine. Would you rather have the brine go down immediately or would you rather wait 30 to 45 minutes before it to convert to a brine? Which one is gonna give that client of yours that level of service that they're really expecting? So now let's look beyond sort of the traditional way that we see it. We see a parking lot, we see a sidewalk. Uh, but let's think about this in terms of the landscape and what that's doing to sort of the, the, ex, the, the external uh, sort of periphery of the property and what are we doing to that. In most cases, we're creating burn in turf areas. In most cases, we're, we're creating problems for trees and shrubs and other ornamentals where it may not be a first year effect, but it's a cumulative effect over years that that's what's killing trees, that's what's killing turf, that's what's killing landscapes. And in many cases, our, our customers are having to budget 
for those, those types of issues that we're creating with the salt to be rectified in the landscape season. Now let's think about this from the perspective of the building, which is sometimes the easiest way for us to think about it, uh, relating it to our clients' experiences. So many times our clients are property owners, property managers, facility managers, and a lot of their focus is really at the building level and inside the building. So rather than look at it from this exterior view, let's think about what happens to salt you know, right at the doorway and as it enters into the building. There have been studies that have shown that, you know, that, that solid rock salt, that, that granular material, that's like 100 grit sandpaper. So imagine what that's doing to flooring, what's that, what that's doing to door jams, what that's doing when it makes its way into the building and gets into the escalator system or the elevator system. Many times, when you see systems broken down in a building, that's usually the reason why. Uh, a lot of times it's because that material has made it into that system and has caused some sort of a corrosion or a malfunction. Um, so if you also think about it as far as how far it tracks into the building, studies have shown that that, that material can track in the building sometimes as far as a thousand feet. So that, 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 that actually then causes these new issues for cleaning. Um, for the carpets that are, are invested in to, to go into the building. So what if we could change the way that we do this so that there's no solid material ever entering that building and that's where liquids again comes into play.